Hi, it's Dr. Kathy Miller from Indiana University. I want you to think with me today about the important role of independent data monitoring committees. Now, this subject has been on my mind recently. I'm getting older as an investigator, and that means I am more frequently asked to join IDMCs and serve the clinical research community and our patients in that way. And this service over the last several of years has got me thinking about this critical role. And I've seen several recent things that raise concern to me as an investigator, as someone who treats patients, and as someone who served on IDMCs. I'm starting to see an erosion of the power of IDMCs to be that crucial checkpoint for patient safety and for making sure that results of trials are not released when they're not ready when we haven't arrived at an answer that we can trust and we can put our faith in. I have to say I was particularly distressed to see the FDA publicly release results of an ongoing phase three trial when those results had not been released by the Independent Data Monitoring Committee. Now I appreciate the FDA's role in evaluating the safety and the efficacy of potential new therapies, and I know they take that role seriously. But if the IDMC didn't release that data for public release, it's because they didn't think there was an answer. That data had not yet reached a threshold that it could reliably be used or should be used to make those decisions. And I think it was a disservice to all of us to have that data released publicly by another group. I also wonder about the impact of that public release on the data in that study itself. If patients start making decisions based on that premature data, their treating physicians start making decisions based on that premature data, we may decrease our ability to come to an answer that the study was designed to evaluate. I've seen some other issues with IDMCs lately that raise the same concern. IDMCs no longer have the power to stop the study. They make a recommendation, a sponsor or a steering committee then have to accept that recommendation. And I've seen steering committees initially refuse to accept the recommendation unless they were shown the blinded data on which the IDMC's recommendation was based. All of these things raise concern to me that in our goal of getting new medicines to patients sooner, we may be starting to cut some corners that could cause problems. Problems for our patients, problems for our own confidence in the safety and reliability and the efficacy of the medicines we so desperately want and that our patients deserve. So the next time you participate in a trial, the next time you review that data, think about that important role if you know somebody who served on an IDMC, give them a thumbs up and a thank you. I'll be back with you again soon. It's Dr. Kathy Miller.